the first two days of the course, I go through how you control draft pressure, furnace pressure, drum level, and so forth. Then after I go through this and explain each particular part of the loop, there's been developed a software program where they actually run a boiler from their computers. They go through and actually demonstrate how the drum level is controlled. They can see how to configure and set up each component of the control. They can also decide what needs to be recorded so the operators have the the information they need. And this is actually a live system where you can see the feed pump running and the forced air fan running. They got seven different exercises that they do so they can see how fuel flow works versus airflow, how drum level works and feed water flows, and also what concerns you have about implosion of the boiler and how to protect against it. All this is a live setup, a way of reviewing what they've learned the first two days by me talking individual components, but this puts it all together so as they look at their computer, it actually looks like they are running a live boiler. And it works exactly the way a system is defined in the NFP Power Protection Code and in the ISA 77 series. The most important parts of the boiler control is what we refer to as cross-limiting control. And of course the purpose of this is to eliminate the possibility of going fuel rich in the boiler and creating an explosion. This is an example of a diagram showing cross-limiting control where the system is set up with the three transmitters, your fuel flow, air flow, and your header pressure control. On a load increase, the load selector rejects the load demand signal and accepts the airflow measurement signal. At the same time, the high selector rejects fuel flow measurement and accepts the increasing feed demand signal. Fuel flow demand becomes equal to the airflow measurement. Airflow demand becomes equal to the load demand. The system acts as a series metering system with fuel following air. On a load decrease, the low selector accepts the low demand signal. Air demand becomes equal to the fuel flow and fuel demand becomes equal to the load demand. Again, the system acts as a series metering system, this time with air following fuel. The advantage of this system is on a load increase, fuel demand cannot be increased until an actual increase in air flow is measured. On a load decrease, air demand cannot be decreased until an actual decrease in fuel flow is measured. On an inadvertent decrease in measured air flow, the fuel demand is immediately reduced in equal amount.